Okay, we're back, everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's continuous coverage of IBM's Information On Demand conference. We're here live in Las Vegas. I'm here with my co-host, uh, Jeff Kelly. Jeff, I think this is the hundredth time we've <laughs> been to Las Vegas this year, but... Feels uh, like it. But, uh, but it's good, this is a, a, a good event, and uh, we've got a great guest here. Uh, we're really excited to have him on. Jim Kobielis is IBM's chief big data evangelist. I added a little something to your title there. I'm a chief. Jim. But uh, welcome <laughs> to theCUBE. Woo! <laughs> so, and a CUBE alum, oh, wait let's a second. not forget. Maybe Great to have you on Maybe again. that's inappropriate, but anyway, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, we're cool, it's just theCUBE. So, uh, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much, pleasure to be here. And David and Jeffrey, you're old buds of mine. So uh, yeah, you've nice had you on here. before, and you were just mentioning this is your first IOD. You've been to many IODs, but this is your first as, uh, as an IBMer. Yeah, that's right. So I'm a different creature. I had been an analyst, and now I'm an IBMer who trades on the fact that he's an ex-analyst, so. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so this is day two for us, Jim. It's like day six for you, right? <laughs> no, it's day actually day three for day me. Three, okay. three of six. Yeah, okay, so you're... Uh, and they keep you busy. Iteration. Oh, you better believe IBM keeps all of our employees busy as beavers to keep so the show running question. smoothly. So, so you, as you were saying, you've been to every IOD uh, as an analyst. Um, you got a rich history as an analyst at, 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 at Forrester, current analysis, et cetera. Um, talk about why you chose to come to IBM. As an analyst, you could have, you were famous, still are, you could have chosen so many companies. Why did you choose to come to IBM? <laughs> People ask me this all the time, you know, I, I, could, make so, I could ask some flip answer like ka-ching, but that's actually not <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually not true. <laughs> I, I Money talks <laughs> and BS walks, people. You heard it here first on theCUBE. <laughs> but no, that, that's actually not the reason. Um, I've been in the industry, you know, people now, I'm, I'm a graybeard. I've been in the industry a long time. Um, and I've evolved throughout my career. And there's, I don't really have a career plan. I sort of follow my instinct about um, what I'd like to do and the kind of organizations I'd like to work with um, and for and the sort of things I want to do, the skills I want to gain. Um, and in the broadest sense, uh, I had been in a, a, with, a, with a solution provider on two occasions very briefly in my career in the past. And I'm not going to name them and everything. But I thought, you know, at a certain point, I'd been an industry analyst for about 12 or 13 years straight. I wanted a change, I wanted a new challenge. Um, and I'm, I'm quite familiar with IBM, the good folks from the Infosphere, the Web Sphere, the, the Teza, SPSS, Cognos, you name it. I was quite familiar with IBM and all of our products from long back. And I'm quite fond of many of our competitors too in the sense that as an analyst, I consulted to many solution providers and I also consulted to their customers. You know, really, you know, life is a funny thing. Um, IBM knew me and said, Jim, we'd like you to be our big data evangelist, and what that means is, you're a thought leader, people follow you, because you say interesting things, uh, and you do research, and you're sort of pushing the envelope, and oh yes, everybody check, or not everybody, this is obviously, <coughs> God, this is an ego thing, but let me just keep <laughs> on going here. Um, so they said, well people read your, your tweets, and your blogs, and so forth, and do you want to join us and continue to do those same things, but as a thought leader? It, uh, within IBM, and I thought long and hard for about five seconds and said yes. So, <laughs> we were having a conversation earlier. Jeff, as you know, created the industry's first uh, uh, big data market sizing report, and it was fun, actually. It was, there was a little bit of tongue-in-cheek action there. We said, hey, we can do <laughs> it, let's just, get, let's do, let's it, do it, put it out there. Why not? Our open source philosophy allowed us to get a lot of really great feedback, and take some arrows. But that's, we took know, a few. That's what we do. But <laughs> so IBM was, you know, one of the leaders, but didn't come out on top, and we were sort of debating. Shame okay, on you. Is, is IBM <laughs> number one in? in Did big we not data. pay you guys but enough was, <laughs> under the <laughs> table? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no pay these, to play here. These guys have total integrity. Thank you. Combined. Just hit edit if you don't believe it. And <laughs> hit edit and contribute. <laughs> but so here's the, here's the reason I'm asking this. So I was reading a Barron's article this weekend about you know the end of the PC era, and it's essentially mm -hmm. saying you know. Dell and HP are in, in big trouble, and, and some of these emerging guys, uh, certainly Apple, and, and, and then when it got to the big data section, it said big data, oh, and of course EMC is going to do well there. Now, of course, that, you know, hats off to EMC, great marketing. But my question to you is, is IBM number one in big data, and, and why? Well, <laughs> big data is such a, a huge 
area, a huge market or paradigm, you got to start to break it down to components, and each of which is a huge area. Business intelligence, data warehousing, advanced analytics, you know, data governance, uh, you know, Hadoop, and so forth. So, is IBM number one? Well, you know who I work for, so let me just you know, break it down into, okay, if you look at what the core of big data is, big data is essentially focused on analytic databases with scalability, with scalable architectures, radically scalable, clearly, to the petabytes for real time to handle multi-structure data and to you know, those databases and data persistence or data delivery vehicles um, are optimized to serve advanced analytic applications, statistical modeling, predictive analysis, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you look at what the core of big data is, first and foremost, traditionally and very much practically in terms of where enterprises have, have invested, enterprise data warehouses, massively parallel enterprise data warehouses like IBM Natiza, like the IBM Smart Anal Infosphere Smart Analytics System and so forth, are the core of the big data market. And we have many comp fine competitors and so forth. But if you look at the three Vs, which is what I'm talking about, the volume, velocity, and variety, big data has been around for a number of years now as a distinct market segment. The name itself has evolved or become you know, hip in the last few years. If you look at who are the leaders in enterprise data warehousing, well, look at IBM, because we have a rich portfolio that I just, uh, I just mentioned. And so, in many ways, um, I'm not going to cite any work that I did previously <laughs> in terms of the evaluations I've made of various vendors, but IBM is very much the top tier of data warehousing and has been since basically the start of the industry. Um, IBM, in terms of the new approaches like Hadoop, we're one of the very top providers have Hadoop solutions for the most scalable requirements. If you look at the announcements uh, just yesterday here at IOD, we've evolved big insights, we've added additional solution functionality that are target, targeted at particular industry requirements for Hadoop projects, uh, whether it's telco or finance and whatnot. So IBM continues to deepen our product portfolio in all things to do both with the platforms, the tools, but also the tailored solutions for particular business problems on top of a data warehousing infrastructure, on top of Hadoop, and of course we have stream computing with Infosphere Streams. So if you look at who provides not only data warehousing but stream computing and also best to breed statistical and predictive modeling, also best to breed BI, best to breed data integration and governance with the Infosphere portfolio, you know, so, so on and so forth. Who is that? IBM by far has the deepest stack of best of breed products across most of the segments of what we generally refer to as, as big data. So really, in many ways, IBM is number one. Yeah, so, um, thank you for that answer, by the way. I hope you have a lot of time here, because we could, we could go, I have a lot of topics that I want to I have time <laughs> for you, you guys, and I <laughs> talk fast, so try Good. me. Um, uh, Jeff Kelly, I want to put you on the spot. So, you just heard, Jim talk about <laughs> IBM's strengths. What do you think, put me on the spot. What do you think IBM's biggest challenges are in the big data world? I think, I think the biggest challenges, Jim, are, uh, you mentioned the portfolio, and it is a wide and deep portfolio, but I think w what we're hearing from our community members is a little bit of confusion around the uh, bringing that portfolio together in solutions that are very easy to kind of translate into business value, talk to the business, help them understand, who might not be so interested in whether it's Natiza or Big Insights or whatever it may be under the covers, but wants to know how you're going to solve business problems. Sure. And putting those together in a way that speaks to the business. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest challenges. So I think. So what do you say to that, uh, James Kabilis? Well, what James Kabilis says, the IBM Big Data Evangelist says to that is, among <laughs> other things, IBM is highly, yeah, we, we recognize that we have to continue to deliver and simplify the solution story of big data across different uh, uh, use cases or mm -hmm. outcomes. If you uh, were in the general session this morning, perfect example of how we're continuing to do that is if uh, you followed what um, uh, my colleague Farana, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Farana, Alarakia, I got her name right. Her demonstration of the next best action signature solution that we've rolled out for 
uh, marketing and, you know, and, and, and customer relationship management. Perfect example of how we're delivering through a, a growing portfolio of solutions um, a quick value on some fairly complex projects that involve the advanced analytics, involve the big data, involve your, your marketing platform like a Unica and so forth, mm -hmm. but in, in a way that, the way she laid it out was beautiful because she actually laid out the, how the product works in, let's say, a call center environment or in a marketing environment. In other words, what we're doing at IBM is we're doing the solution cell through increasing bundling and integration and tailoring of a product portfolio that in many ways is general purpose, you can deploy our next best action signature solution across a wide range of use cases in customer centric channels. So we not only provide these solutions, we provide the business analytics and optimization professional services that can help you in a consultative fashion to assess, you know, you know first of all, what are you trying to deliver in terms of value in a particular application? What set of tools and components and platforms are key enablers for that. What offerings do we provide already as it were quote unquote out of the box, I'm going to mm -hmm. use that in air quote, that not only contain, incorporate those components, but also bundle in the business content, the predictive models and the business rules and the orchestrations and so forth that are tailored to your specific needs in your industry or your specific need in the business process that you're trying to say automate or make more agile, mm -hmm. you know, be it finance, be it marketing and whatnot. And so we work with customers to the whole way in a consultative fashion to make sure that you realize that value. And we have domain experts in all these areas I described that we can bring to bear on those kinds of engagements. If the customer wants to go there, we don't force them to use us for professional services if they have all the expertise in house. We have solutions, so we can go. We have a wide range of partners we can bring into these kinds of engagements as well, to flesh out the overall value story, ultimately focused on the customer. So that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been doing for quite a while, and I think we do a really good job, of probably better than most of our competitors on the solution sale, or the solution value proposition from the very start, driving the whole engagement. Mm -hmm. And what about it, kind of engaging with smaller customers? I mean, I, th I think certainly, you know, the Fortune 500 enterprise, think of the IBM customers. What about the, you know, the SMB, the mid-size organization that thinks, well, this is really interesting what IBM's doing, but you know, we can't afford that. That's not in our, that's not in our, uh, we can't do that. It's just not going to going to work this, this year, even the next few years in terms of the finances. Well, of course we have a broad range of small to mid-market tailored solution packages across most of our, our product areas. In fact, we had an announcement yesterday of an SMB-focused uh, offering. Um, I urge you to look at the press release on that. I did a blog, in fact, last night. What I'm saying is that we are very attuned to making sure that we have the right solution tailored and priced and licensed appropriately for each market segment from large enterprise to small business. We have cloud offerings for small and mid-market. We have, you know, expert integrated solutions for a wide range of uh, sizes in the pure systems product family. Um, so we, you know, at IBM, we want to make sure that we can deliver value to you in a way that won't break your budget and mm -hmm. will help you to realize ROI on that overall project. So we have, I think we've gotten better in recent years about focusing on the smaller customers who really in many ways drive most economies, because most startups, startups by their very nature start small. And at IBM, we want them to be an IBM customer from the get-go, and so we've got to give them you know, favorable pricing. Mm -hmm. the, um, we've been talking about going down to Strata this week, and t totally different conferences, even though a lot it's a of great show, I love Strata. Yeah. I wish they were holding theirs on a different week, I would be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> you would, and of course now it's Strata plus Hadoop World, we should mention that, because this was originally Hadoop World and it sort of morphed into Strata and Hadoop World, but the, the conversation there is similar, but, but <coughs> there's a stark difference. And one of the big differences is people will constantly ask the question, what are mainstream businesses doing with big data? Now, you don't hear that question so much here. I mean, mm -hmm. you hear it, but a lot of people here walking around in suits, a lot of business people, and we've, predicted, every, many have predicted, it was a pretty easy prediction, that the, the traditional BI, data warehouse worlds, the analytic worlds, the legacy worlds, if you will, and the new Hadoop worlds are going to collide together. And that's, you know, 
clearly what's, what's happening Collide. this week at, at no. Strata, but I wonder what, if you could give us your angle on that. I don't think it's so much collision, Dave. I, I, I think it's the fact that the new worlds of Hadoop and NoSQL and so forth, graph databases and the like, are the nucleus of how, where the industry is evolving into. A great many data warehousing solution portfolios, including ours, um, integrate out of the box now with Hadoop, with, whether it's Apache or Big Insights. In fact, I'm speaking tomorrow, I'll plug myself. I'm speaking tomorrow on how Hadoop Big Insights can fit into or factor into your data warehousing strategy. With, uh, and I'll be discussing particular deployment models for Big Insights in a data warehousing context. That really you know, highlights something that I, I was a big theme of mine prior to joining IBM, and it remains one of my core themes, which is that Hadoop in many ways, you can see it, see it as the nucleus of the next generation enterprise data right. warehouse in the cloud. You know, when I use the word enterprise data warehouse, I have to do that in air quotes, because that term is an old term. You know, now we have cloud analytics, comprehensive cloud analytics. I just blogged on that this morning. So in other words, the terminology itself, let's not let, the, or big data as a term, let's not let that get in the way of understanding the new patterns of delivering solutions, analytics and data into new types of applications. And by the way, I, when I said cloud, I, I didn't mean it in an antagonistic sort of competitive way, I really meant it in a mashup way. So those yeah. two worlds coming yes. together. And that's really what Oh what definitely, mashup and interpenetrating. Yep. I mean, like we, in fact, we have, we IBM, in fact, in our team specifically that I am on, we have people at the Strata Hadoop world this week, um, and because we can't afford to miss it, we're a big enough vendor that we we can divide and conquer, as it were. Most of us are here, though. So I'd love to get your your perspective on this. So it seems like you got you know get that Hadoop layer and it's Apache Hadoop, great, all all good there, and then you get the applications, and we'd love to see more going on in applications, and um, yeah. seems to be you know getting some traction there. <coughs> There's a really interesting battleground in the middle now. Uh, we saw MapR introduce the new platform today. We yep. saw Hadapt last week. You know, Cloudera's got something coming. HortonWorks and Microsoft announced some stuff. And it Teradata, Teradata and Astrodata mm -hmm. announced, and and uh, Continuity Software is announcing. There's a lot of action going on oh, yeah. in the middle. Can you talk about that a little bit and and help us squint through in that? In the middle. What do you mean? I want to know what you mean so by you the got, middle. You got the Hadoop layer, right? It's open source. Right? Yeah. And you got the application <laughs> layer up here, mm -hmm. and then in the middle oh. being the SQL and the NoSQL guys coming together, you got you know, Cloudera trying to add value, you got Hadapt now bringing in some, some new infrastructure, you got MapR doing its thing, there's just a lot of uh, innovation going on and sort of a land grab going on for that, like what I'm calling mm -hmm. the middle space in between the app layer and the, the core Hadoop infrastructure, HDFS. Yeah, you know, I would interpret the word middle in this context to refer to the tools um, in the prepackaged like you know, models and algorithms and libraries for MapReduce and R and so forth, and the vendors who specialize in providing tools for modeling and managing and optimizing and doing governance on big data, doing search and you know all that stuff. Protecting it is another you big, know, big yeah. Theme. The whole middle needs yeah. to be continued. We've made and continue to make deep investments in you know the quote unquote middle um, in IBM research and you know. For example, Big Insights it continues to evolve. In fact, we have announcements this week on new functionality there. Due to our deep investment ongoing in building out all of those tools and making it all work together more seamlessly, uh, not only within you know, the Hadoop universe, but Hadoop is just making it, it work together seamlessly with your data warehouse, with your, uh, your existing data integration or ETL tools and the like. So in terms of the middle, you know, there's a, there's a huge and very interesting space of, of vendors, many of whom are IBM partners. For example, um, Karmasphere on the modeling side. Um, you have uh, a number of others like Revolution Analytics on the advanced analytics with R, so forth. Um, at IBM, we partner with a great many of them. We ourselves are doing investments in all those areas. We are evolving our portfolio, as especially um, uh, uh, big insights, but also Infosphere streams, um, to work out of the box with the middle layer of tools, which is the layer of tools and, and infrastructure um, and services you need to make big data more robust, more scalable, more manageable, easier to do root cause analysis, um, easier to ingest the data, like DataClick, for example, we announced that uh, the other day. Um, 
you know, more user friendly. So you don't need to have to be able, you don't need necessarily to hire expensive talent off the street to, who've got some grounding in MapReduce, that it all just sort of works out of the, out of the proverbial box. That's the f what I'm describing there is, is really in many ways the focus of our ongoing product development and partnering in this whole e evolving arena. We're getting, the, we're getting the hook, but I have to ask you the one last question around, <laughs> okay. around the whole database space. You know, three, four, five years ago, you go to a party and somebody says, eh, I'm in the database business. You go, oh, oh poor you. And now the database business is <laughs> like the hottest thing boring. going. It used right? to be boring. I mean, now it's so, Sybase is now yeah. a mobile play for SAP. You got Oracle and IBM doing the urinary Olympics around who was first with multi-tenant <laughs> databases. Urinary Olympics, I, I love that. Because IBM was first <laughs> with a multi-tenant database, folks. Oracle did not invent a multi-tenant <laughs> database, for the record. Uh, but you got the, now you got a Fate of, of NoSQL guys, you know, coming out and, and, and some un unbelievable innovations there. What's your angle on what's going on in the, in the database business? And then we'll, uh, we'll break. Yeah, I, I'll try to keep this really brief. Uh, this is the golden age of database innovation. Um, you know, with all the NoSQL, NoSQL by itself is a humongous catch-all for, you know, key value stores and graph databases and columnar and memory and whatnot. That is hugely hot, and clearly, not only are we monitoring and, and doing investments, and we're we're continuing to do, as it were, surveillance of that space because IBM makes strategic acquisitions. Uh, we we recognize that there's probably some areas there that we're not we're not the innovators on. That you know, we bought Natiza. Natiza was an innovator in data warehousing appliances. We reserve the option of uh, you know, pulling out our checkbook when it makes sense strategically for us. It's a hot space. IBM writes checks and code, folks. But uh, not physical <laughs> checks. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe, maybe Ginny Rometty does, right. but I, I don't. Right. Jim Kobielis, <laughs> thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. I wish sure. we had more Pleasure. time, it was a fantastic segment. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back uh, with our next guest live from IOD in Las Vegas. Keep it right there. <laughs>